really good. It's your boy, Spider Man, aka D Man. You're a man. I'm sitting here with my sister, my day one, the one who holds it down for me, my co host, Daria. Say what's up, Daria. Hello. And we are here for another edition of the Smash Pay Per View Prediction Specials. This time we got another double feature because we have NXT TakeOver Brooklyn number four this Saturday and SummerSlam this Sunday. We are joined today by our other host, our other co host. King Dead, what's really good, King Dead? Hey, what's going on there, D? See, see, he's all enthusiastic and all heroic and everything. You gotta love him. He's our hero. Oh, he's yeah. our resident hero. You gotta love him. So, as we said, we got NXT TakeOver, Brooklyn, four. There's been four of them. The time has been flying by. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The time has been flying by, and so far... Each takeover, let alone a takeover in Brooklyn at the Barclays Center, has been amazing. And right now we have a card. You know, we're going to start off uh, our predictions with uh, with takeover. And if this is your first time listening in, what we do is here for Hill Kaiju, we give our predictions. We give you a brief rundown of the feuds that you're about to see, just in case you missed anything. And we just run down who we feel is going to be the victor or victors in any particular situation. And for NXT TakeOver Brooklyn, we're going to start us off real quick with the Velveteen Dream versus EC3. Velveteen Dream has become my favorite, favorite ass wrestler in, in the WWE in general. Just in general, not just in NXT, in the WWE as a whole. Uh, he's, he, ever since he had his match with Aleister Black, uh, who is currently injured right now, which we'll get to in a minute, uh, ever since he had that that Say My Name match with Aleister Black, he has been just a force to be reckoned with. Whether he wins, whether he loses, he's been just incredibly entertaining. And he's going up against EC3, another peacock of sorts uh, and on the NXT roster. EC3 coming back uh, from TNA after he was cut a few years ago and just turned everything around and became EC3, Eric Carter III. And he's back in WWE, Ethan. and he's... Oh, my bad, Ethan. You're right. My bad. What did I say, Eric? You yeah. said Eric. You said my Eric. bad! What? I told Aren't you we're tired. I told you we're tired. Mm. Uh, Ethan Carter III, my bad. Uh, <laughs> ever since he's come back, he's also been pretty pretty damn good. He hasn't really been, had much to work with uh, until now, until this TakeOver match with Velveteen Dream. Um, and to start us off on our prediction run, we're going to go... And throw this to King Dead. Who do you got? Velveteen Dream versus Ethan Carter the Third. EC three. Who you got? Oh, geez, this is a uh, a tough one. They're both like you know, both masters at the uh, the promo game. They're both great talkers. I don't know if you saw it, but on NXT TV, like two weeks ago, they had this poolside interview that was just all levels of just blaming homosexuality slash <laughs> slash just hilarity and it was like like i enjoy both of these characters it's hard because like you know i mean ec3 has just completely won me over i mean uh velveteen dream has completely won me over but ec3 has just been like you know doing his game for a while now over in impact tna that people may have never seen before so this is their first bigger wider exposure to him i'm gonna say it goes to uh oh, geez this is a coin toss for me i'm gonna say it goes to uh, dream okay okay daria okay. who doff you have okay listen i like the top one percent top one percent okay <laughs> can we do my thing is the hair. <laughs> I'm sorry. I've I've tried to be patient with the hair. I've tried to figure out the hair. She hates EC3's hair. What's up with that? Could you just <laughs> break that down to me? <laughs> we can't break it down. We can't break it down. But yeah, so he does. He needs to do something with that. Uh, hair. Uh, but of course, you know who I'm going for? The Dream, Velveteen Dream. That's who I'm going for. All right. Um, aside from EC3's hair, I do love everything about him. I love his look. Uh, one of, one of the things that that I've learned over the years of me watching uh, TNA slash Impact off and on while he was with them is while he may not be the best in the ring, he is 
entertaining to watch. And mm-hmm. the whole point of the whole point of this is to be entertained. Uh, and that's that's what he does. That's what he that's that's the way that he goes. Um, so that's my one thing about EC3. I, I I've grown to love him uh, f- over the years. Uh, Velveteen Dream, as I said, is my favorite wrestler. So I got to go for him, and the reason why is because I think that out of out of the two, the one that needs to continued momentum. Once, once they manage to slip past uh, each other, is Velveteen Dream. EC3, if he drops this, is not a big deal. Uh, but Velveteen Dream, like he needs to get some momentum up because I think they got they they are high on him. I, I've heard rumors of of you know phone calls that that he's had with higher ups where uh, where like Triple H and Vince are super high on Velveteen Dream. Yeah, I so figured. like if I they figured. if they have plans to do something with him. He needs the win. He definitely needs the win. Uh, so I got to give it to Velveteen Dream. And now we're going to move a little bit further <laughs> to the NXT Tag Team Championships. We have the Undisputed Era, the dastardly villains and cowardly heels, just, <laughs> just, just being, just being jagoffs, and that's why I love them so much. Versus Mustache Mountain, that's uh, Tyler Bate and Trent Seven. And there's really, uh, th- this has been going back since at least the UK tournament, which was a, a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, UK tournament, Mustache Mountain took the title away from the Undisputed Era, dropped it back to the Undisputed Era uh, uh, a few weeks later. And oh, and that just... match was amazing. Check it out on NXT t- television. Like, that exactly. is just a hell of a match. They tore the house down. That's yeah. that's that's definitely something that you have to see. Matter of fact, you have to watch the whole tournament, but you definitely have to see that match. You have to see that match. Uh just just for some some great uh in-ring storytelling, some great action the whole night. That was amazing. And because of that, I'm super high on this this match right here. They've been going back and forth and not only that, we, we have like several tag teams waiting in the wings. We have uh uh the Mighty uh waiting in the wings. We have um uh, War, war raiders. raiders yeah war yeah. raiders said they want whoever wins <laughs> yeah we got war raiders uh we got street profits possibly trying to make a run for it oh yeah so yeah. so like the nxt Divi- uh, tag team division may not be the the biggest thing right now in terms of like roster size but like even people who are oh, who are like out on the fringes of the tag team division feel like they need they, they deserve a shot and that's what's really going to make this match so so interesting it's going to have a lot of uh, title implications down the line but uh right now we're going to throw it to king dead who do you have undisputed era versus mustache mountain oh god this is another tough one because i've loved both of them for different reasons uh <laughs> undisputed era are just the biggest shits in the world and they're perfect at it and I enjoy, like, I am just completely entertained by what they do. Like, you know, just Kyle O'Reilly and Roderick Strong being the biggest dick in the world. And it's like, but Mustache Mountain, it's like, you know, they're friends. I mean, it's like Trent Severin trained uh, trained Tyler Bate. Like, you know, they've worked together for years. I mean, they're like, you know, the closest of buddies. <laughs> we know how that works out usually. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tough call. I mean, they're amazing. Like, everybody on this in this match is an amazing talent in their own right. So, I mean, this is another definite coin flip that like, you know, could be the sleeper match of the night, depending on how things go. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, undisputed error continues to hold on to the tag titles though. Okay. Okay. Daria. I'm going to have to agree with KD. I mean, they're assholes. (laughs) They're not going to give it up. (laughs) I don't know what to say. Okay. What do you have? Okay, me, Menace? me. I have to, and, and my reasoning is is one. Uh, Roderick Strong got the loss, so that's that's a that's one in the pro column for undisputed era making the win. Uh, two, uh, WWE is still setting up their WWE NXT UK div- uh, division, which does have a tag team division, and I don't know how it would track to have. Uh, Mustache Mountain, which is probably going to be one of the the biggest tag teams in the UK division, have the main NXT tag team titles. That's another 
pro for United, uh, United, wow, uh, Undisputed Era. And quite frankly, uh, when, we, when we get to this match later on, uh, to the next match later on, um, I honestly think that Undisputed Era looks so much better when they have all the gold. Yeah, they, look they really so do. Much better when they have all yeah, the gold. Yeah, yeah. Because, like, uh, they have, NXT has so many great faces and heels and tweeners yeah. that would look so much better chasing gold. Undisputed Era is one of the rare few that looks so much better holding gold. Yeah. And because of that, I think Undisputed Era manages to edge out Mustache Mountain um, and retain their championships. It's, it's going to be an amazing match, but I think they're going to find some way to edge them out. Like It's going to be one of those things where it's like just like fingertips away from Mustache Mountain, which is going to make it look even more devastating when they lose. Yeah, I agree. Slipping a little further, we got Shayna Baszler versus Kyrie Sane oh, for the yes. NXT Women's Championship. Kyrie Sane, of course, defeated Shayna Baszler uh, the first time that they faced up at the May Young Tournament. Uh, Kyrie for uh, for in the finals of the May Young Tournament, in fact. Uh, and but you know, since then, Kyrie has just been kind of there on the NXT roster, just kind of yeah, there she lately. Has been. Uh, but Shayna Baszler. Uh, on the other hand, has taken the world completely by storm, and technical difficulties are abound. We managed to lose our recorder, but we're back. We're back. Uh, shoot, now I'm trying to remember where we left off. You were talking about Shayna Baszler. Oh, yeah. yeah. Shayna Baszler, yeah, yeah. Kyrie, Kyrie Sane, we were just starting up on that. Thank yeah, you, thank yeah. you. Shayna Baszler has been taking the, taking the, the NXT by storm, and honestly... Quite honestly, she is, if not the best, one of the best heels in all of WWE. Yeah, she is dangerous. Yeah. She looks like a threat. And she is the right kind of asshole to make whatever she says and does just fit her character. As a result, she has pushed everybody from, from Dakota Kai to um, Candice LeRae, all the way to Kyrie Sane, to do whatever they can to prove that they have this this winning edge, this this dark edge um, that they they didn't have previously. Moving it into another gear, in fact. And this past NXT, if you managed to miss it, Kyrie Sane not only beat Aaliyah, she beat the brakes off the girl. Hitting her with three, three elbow drops off the top rope, and then putting her hand—what do they, what do they call it? The pirate's anchor. Yeah. The putting her in the pirate's anchor, bridging it like a Moodle lock, and pointing she right it. at yeah. Shayna Baszler. Yeah. At the announce, uh, on the uh, at the announce, uh, uh, announcement table. Yeah. Thank you. God dang. Yeah, I'm stuck. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was that it, intense. It was intense. It was badass. It was it was the best that I've seen Kyrie saying. She's doing, like, this is going to be a really good match. And you have the unenviable task of picking our first one. So who you got, KD? Uh, I mean, Shayna Baszler has been on a roll, but Kyrie Sane did have the big win over her when it counted at the Mae Young Classics Finals last year. So, I mean, this is like, you know, one of these situations where, like, you know, Kyrie knows what she's going into. Uh, Shayna Baszler, you know, has someone who can actually challenge her now on a level she may have not seen before. I'm going to say uh, Kyrie Sane takes it. Mm. Okay, that's our first uh, championship that's changing hands then, if that's the case. Yeah, see, here's the deal. Okay, Shayna Baszler. Oh, my God, she is so orgasmic to watch. Is that a word? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it's a word, but okay, we'll let you keep it. Yeah, I mean, God, she's just hot. Do you not just see what she does? Yeah, okay, okay. 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 But. You're making this call uncomfortable, but okay. Oh, get over it. Kyrie Sane, if you did not see that match between her and Aaliyah, oh my God, I got goosebumps. So, like KD said, yeah, Shayna should be just a little bit, she should be a little bit frazzled. She did win May Young, so 
Shayna should be a little bit frazzled, and unfortunately, I might have to go with Kyra Sane, too. Okay. I'm going to make it three for three with a caveat. I'll make it three for three with a caveat. I think Kyrie Sane's going to get the win. Mm-hmm. I think it's going to be a hard-hitting match, surprisingly hard-hitting match, because people kind of forget that Kyrie can handle her own against somebody like a Shayna Baszler. Um, I think Baszler is going to find herself on the back foot throughout a good chunk of this match, and right when it looks like she might lose her title, she'll find some way to get disqualified. So I think technically, yeah, Kyrie yeah. gets the now win. that will happen. Now I agree with you that that will happen because yeah. then again, again, it's Shayna Baszler and oh my god, yeah, it's Shayna Baszler. So there you go. Yeah, I, I honestly, because like, what, what's what's the next takeover after this? Uh, Royal Rumble and then oh, that would be the one in uh, Survivor Series. Oh, okay, so we're gonna have a takeover for Survivor Series. Yeah, uh, I think we're gonna have a takeover for Royal Rumble. And then, of course, we're going to have the takeover uh, before uh, WrestleMania. Yeah, so mm-hmm. she has time to get it back. Yeah, so I think I think this feud is going to continue because Kyrie versus Shayna is money. Like they say, Carmella's money. Yeah. Uh, Kyrie versus uh, Shayna is money. Money, 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 money. Come on, D. Money. No. Anyway, as I was saying, I think Kyrie gets the win. Shayna retains the title, though. That's that's what I believe. That's what I think is going to happen. Mm. And as we continue to speak about titles, this is technically the no. This isn't the first. This is the mm-hmm. second. Yeah. NXT North American Championship uh, match for the title. The second title defense. Because I think he he I think uh, Adam Cole defended it at the UK tournament versus shoot I can't remember. It's lost on me, but he did defend it before. <laughs> I know I know I'm supposed to be sounding professional, but I could pl- I'm blanking on who we defended it against, but he did defend it before. This is the second time. First time at the takeover. NXT North America Championship. Adam Cole, baby. Baby. Has like found way after way after way not to put that title on the line. He he's managed to do that. And Ricochet finally decides to call him out. He's Mr. Show Me right now. He's the king of the mountain. You know, that's that's the guy. That's the guy that everybody wants to wants to see succeed in NXT and in WWE. And this match is going to be great. You're going to have Ricochet flipping all over the place. You're going to have Adam Cole trying to find some way to tell a story and try to keep Ricochet at bay. This is not going to be like Ricochet versus Velveteen Dream where it's anything you could do, I could do better. It's just going to be Adam Cole wants to retain his damn title. And that's the only thing that matters. And he's going to show it this Saturday. KD, who you got? Adam Cole versus Ricochet. Um, God dang. Why are there so many good quality matches here? This is like just the toughest thing in the world. And it's like I said that the tag match is going to tear it down. But Undisputed Era has a lock on possible just tearing down the house matches on Saturday night. Uh, Adam Cole, baby. (laughs) Ricochet. And it's just going to be like. This match, like, this crowd is just going to be on their feet the entire time, I'm predicting, just because the sheer level that these two are at. And it's like, as much as I'd love to see Ricochet finally, like, you know, beat the piss out of Adam Cole, baby, um, I think he retains. Uh, Undisputed Era is going to hold on to all their belts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Daria. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to copy, but yeah, I don't think Ricochet... Uh, I mean, he's ready for it, but I don't think they're going to give it to him, if that makes sense. It makes sense. Okay, so yeah, Adam Cole, baby! We're going to have to go with Adam Cole. Okay. As I said for the Tag Team Championships, I think Undisputed Era looks better with the gold while everybody else chases. I think the very second that they lose gold, uh, that's when when we're going to see them on, on the main roster in some respect. Because... NXT needs a team like the Undisputed Era. They need somebody to just be the quintessential bad guys without being, like, incredibly bad guys, if that makes yeah. any sense. Yeah. yeah, they're, yeah. They're, they're, not, they're, not like, they're not like the usual heels. They're not, like, just supreme bad guys, but, you know, they, they, they need somebody... They, they, need, they need somebody on NXT to be, you know... 
the foils for the for the faces. Yeah, out there. I mean, and they're perfect for it. They have like you know the role of like you know the NWA NWO Bullet Club style team that we don't really have in WWE currently. Yeah, yeah. and it's like they're the kind of team like you know that deserves to just run over everybody. <laughs> that's that's about right. That's that's it. So Adam Cole gets a win. Undisputed Era retain all of their gold. I might say this though. I mean, Ricochet might. I mean, I Ricochet could still win the match, but he won't get the title. That's a possibility. That is a possibility. But I don't. I don't see them doing that. Like with with uh with with Adam Cole because Adam Cole needs. Bebe. Yep. Thank yeah. you, Bebe. Adam Cole needs that sort of marquee win in WWE, and yeah. Ricochet doesn't lose anything by losing this match. No, he really Mm-mm. doesn't. He He's, doesn't lose he anything. He still looks good. So that's my pick. I go Adam Cole. And then we hey, finally, finally get to the main event, the NXT Championship match. This has been a cluster of some stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on. First of all, Aleister Black loses his title at an NXT taping to Tommaso Ciampa because Johnny Gargano decides to run down to the ring and quote unquote save Black. Yeah. Gets his ass involved. Yeah. Gets involved yeah. and ends up costing Aleister Black the championship. Later on, Aleister Black agrees that it's his fault that he lost his title. And now we have a triple threat match. That was one of my favorite moments on NXT tele- television when uh, Gargano is like, it's my fault. I'm sorry. It's like, you know, it's my fault. And it's like, yeah. it shouldn't have happened. And Black is like, yeah, it was your fault. And just Black Mass kicks him, <laughs> knocks him out. Like, like th- there's there's like no hatred or anything. He's just like, dude, get, keep your freaking head out of my match. Yes. Yeah. It's like, why, why are you sticking your nose where it doesn't belong? Yeah. That that's what that kick really felt like. It's just like I don't hate you, but Jesus Christmas, yeah. leave me alone. It, you're right. It was your fault. Okay, Moving on. forward, though, the following week after we got it confirmed that it's a triple threat match, yeah, uh, we later find out that it's because uh, Alistair Black is injured. But yeah, I, I mean, I, he got beat up like you know after an NXT taping. He yep. was just yeah. laid out on the ground. Yeah. We and, don't know who beat him up. I mean, but there are like there are a ton of suspects. You saw a ton of people in that footage. I saw Johnny Gargano. Yeah. I saw the Undisputed Era. Heavy Machinery was oddly there for some reason, along with uh, Steve Cutler and oh, what's his name from the Dubstep Cowboys? That isn't the uh, the one that's uh, on Murphy. Two Hundred Five. Not, yeah, not Murphy. Buddy Murphy. Oh, uh, the other one. Yeah, uh, Blake, right? Blake, yeah, Something Blake was like there. Yeah. There was a few, like, a lot of suspects hanging around in the uh, <laughs> the parking lot. So, I mean, it's possible someone decided to, like, you know, put a hit out on Aleister Black, and suddenly it's back to being a, uh, a one-on-one match with Gargano and Ciampa one yeah. more time. Yeah. yeah, this is this is a regular who shot JR kind of situation. Who ran yeah. over Stone Cold? Who did it for The Rock? Who like really? This this is the this is the best kind of storytelling because we don't know who did it. Yeah, and it's a mystery. We don't know who uh, took out Alistair Black, and he doesn't seem to be too happy about the situation. Not at all. Like no. for it, for instance, Candice LeRae was even back there. Yeah, she, she could was. have been involved for all we know. On behalf of of Johnny Gargano, so mm-hmm. it's a mystery. So keep an eye out. Start watching NXT if you haven't been watching it. Keep an eye out for yeah. For the TV's who, been really good. Down. Oh yeah. yes been very good but moving on to the actual match Tommaso Ciampa Johnny Gargano if you paid any attention to the NXT takeovers that we've been having uh this story has been in the making for a year and some change yeah this has been going on for a while and finally we get it for the NXT championship a last man standing match between Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano KD who you got wow like the entire card is just so (laughs) problematic it is like, I honest, like, this is one of these cards where you honestly cannot predict who's going to win. There's no clear path ahead of us. That's what makes and it it's so like, hard. I love it for that reason. Like, I hate it, but I also love that fact that I have no damn clue who could possibly win. Like, you hate um, being put on the spot, but, like, you love the, abil- the ability for NXT to, to tell the story and get you invested and just have you going, who's going to win? 
I mean, Champa, the bastard he is, I mean, clawed his way to the very top of the heap, won the NXT Championship, the one thing Gargano has yet to do and has failed at every opportunity. Yeah. So, I mean, Gargano, Champa, I mean, could this be the final match? Who knows? Could, like, you know, Gargano finally win the NXT Championship? Again, who knows? But in my opinion, I see. <laughs> God dang, I really hate this so much. I, I I completely hate this. Um, I see. I'm just gonna say it. Gargano winning. Okay. Oh. Title change. I, I I think there's a title change in our future. Daria. A last man standing match is just like you know one of those perfect opportunities. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is going to be final. Yeah, very here's, final. Here's my thing with that: they already had that, didn't they? No, they had no. a oh, the uh, Chicago, Chicago street, street fight. fight. Okay, yeah. and even with the Chicago street fight and Champa being handcuffed, by the way, uh, still beat Gargano. Yeah. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna let you finish because because yeah. I, I have stuff to so, say about that. Yeah, exactly. So. You know, I really want Gargano to win. However, I mean, come on. Champa, Champa is a dick. <laughs> he is. He is such I just, a dick. I don't see that voting <laughs> well for Gargano. So I'm just, I'm going to have to go with Champa. I'm sorry. I'm okay. Gonna have to. Okay. What, what I said earlier, uh, just, just a second ago, is I have some thoughts on that. Champa won the Chicago street, street fight almost by technicality. He got his ass whooped throughout the entirety of the match, or at least throughout the latter half of the match, to the point that he was stretchered out. Match never technically ended. And when Gargano was getting back in the ring, he managed to just sneak his arms around his legs, grasp Gargano's head, and DDT him onto the exposed slats underneath the mat. That's what happened. And quite frankly... Quite frankly, I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know who's going to win this. I don't. I don't. I I, 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 I think what's going to happen, I think what's going to happen is Champa gets to win and he's going to do it in that same technical kind of way. We're going to find out that like uh, he's going to like handcuff Gargano's legs to a ring post and make it so he can't get up. By the count of ten, he's gonna do something that is just so shitty that we're gonna hate him even more. Unless Gargano can dig deep and dig and just dig into his dickery, that that might happen too. I, we 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 it. might here here's here's I got like a couple theories. Like that's my first theory that that Champa's going to find some way to be an absolute dick. Find some way to be an absolute dick get the win by technicality and everybody's going to hate him even more. Or we're going to get the continued descent of Johnny Gargano. It's Garga we're going to find out that Gargano was the one who beat up Black and just slunk past uh, 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 William Regal into the performance center. And just like, that's, that's how we're going to find out that Gargano's just going to continue his descent. And that's how he's gonna win. He's gonna he's gonna win by tapping into his own dickish streak yeah. and get the win. So it's a toss up to me. Either yeah. one either one is a is a possible a possibility. But what I really see happening is Ciampa getting the win somehow. Not not even like defeating Gargano. He's just going to win, just barely. Find some way to just barely win, yeah. and everybody's gonna absolutely hate him for it. And I'm gonna love it. I'm gonna yeah. absolutely love it. I just the only thing I can vision. Is remember when Champa finally won the belt and he just kind of went to that old lady and was yep. like, Yeah, yep. it's old mine. Lady. I was like, Oh my god, who does that? Champa, the absolute dick. Oh the god, so much. Jackass. Yeah, I, I, I love him and I hate him at the same time. Yeah, like how, how can you not? enjoy that level of old school heelishness that's just perfect for me yeah that's perfect for me and anyway that's that's the end of takeover what is going to be infinitely better than SummerSlam. 
Th- that, this is not a bold prediction. No, this is just fortunately. Like yeah. water's wet, the sky is blue, fire is hot. Taker was going to be better than SummerSlam. Uh, yeah. Just that's it. That that that's how this is going to go. But let's 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 dig into SummerSlam. SummerSlam is going to be good, but I think it's going to be I think Taker was going to be better. Uh, forget it. We're gonna we're gonna go into the kickoffs. Uh, and we're going to try to run down because we have 13 matches. We're going to have several hours of WWE content. So we're not going to try to take as much time as we did uh, uh, on TakeOver in terms of trying to give you a backstory. We're just going to try to run through this. So let's start off with our kickoff matches. Um, first off, Rusev and Lana versus Andrade, Cien, Almas, and Zelina Vega. They've been going at it after each other on SmackDown. It's been Pretty entertaining. I don't know why it's on the kickoff, but yeah. since it's such a it packed really card, shouldn't be. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's shouldn't. such a packed card though, so something has to be on there, mm. and I can't really see anything else because like everything else is like a title match or or has something to do with uh with a major feud. So, uh, Katie, who you got? Rusev, Lana versus Almas and Vega. Almas and Vega. <laughs> Just that quick. See, see, in TakeOver, we're like hemming and hauling and going like, yeah. oh my God, I don't know. Who is it going to be? <laughs> it's like, nah, almost a bad. Uh, uh. That's just it. Yeah. I'll take it. I'll exactly take it. Daria, who you got? I, I, don't, I don't see them bringing almost and Vega in just to lose. Although, Rusev and Lana technically don't gain anything or lose anything if they lose. Yeah. So, yeah, almost and Vega. <laughs> Almost in Vega, just, just for that yeah, reason right yeah. there. Rusev and, and Lana gain nothing from a win. Uh, they lose nothing with a loss. Yeah. Because everybody knows that Rusev is as good as he is. He's not a rookie, so, yeah. Yeah, and Lana has been showing her ass. So oh, yeah. I am not disappointed at all, so, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, there you go. That, that, that That's our pick. Uh, moving on, we got Finn Balor versus Constable Corbin. This one might be a little bit harder because... Uh, one Finn Balor already won once before the, this pre what was it Extreme Rules, yeah, with yeah. like the one or two Extreme matches. Uh, I'm still salty about that. Yeah, uh, but Finn Balor <laughs> versus Constable Corbin, they've been needling at each other. It's it's been a decent feud, but but it's a feud where it's like okay, let's move on to something more important for Finn, please, because Finn deserves to, Finn deserves to be mid card champion at the very least by the end of this mm-hmm. year. At the very least, by the end of this year. So, who you got? Balor versus Corbin. I think it's going to be Balor. Oh, there you go. Daria? Finn Balor. <laughs> Damn. Okay, I'm, I'm cool with this. Let's, let's, <laughs> no, I'm cool with this. I am very cool with this. Let's just run through this. I got to go Finn Balor because, again, Corbin gains nothing from a win, but Finn does lose a lot from a loss. Yeah, he does. Because despite the fact that Corbin is still an active wrestler, he's still taking on the role of constable. So, why? He doesn't need to win. He doesn't need to win. He can. St- he still. He still has his position. Yeah. It still is a big thing, uh, in terms of of advancing many storylines on Raw. So, yeah. boom, Finn Balor, three for three. Moving on. B team versus the revival. There's really no story behind this besides the fact that B team has the tag team championships for Raw, uh, tag team champions uh, ships for Raw, and uh, the revival are the revival. <laughs> but there's nothing more to say. Yeah. The revival are the revival. KD, who you got? This is actually a tough one because I could see it going either way. I mean, the B team continue their winning streak, and it's like you know our mm-hmm. champions for another day. Or the Revival finally get some tag team gold and start down a new path. Um, I'm going to say Revival. Ooh. Okay. Title changes. Daria? I'm going to stick with the B team. I don't think they're going to let them lose yet. Okay. My thing is, if this was on the main Ross, uh, on the main card, mm-hmm. I'd say the Revival. Yeah. If this was on the main card, I would I would be willing to go to, go with the revival because yeah, but I think they would have the time. Yeah, with the pre-show, I just I don't yeah, know. I don't think a title is going to be changing hands on on this particular pre-show. Um, so yeah, I got I got I got the B team retaining the championships in some particular kind of way. We got another championship match on the pre-show. Again, this card is kind of stacked, so yeah. it's hard to get on to the main card. Uh, 
So we have a cruiserweight championship match between Cedric Alexander and Drew Gulak. If you have, just like we, like, just like we said with NXT, if you haven't been watching Two Hundred Five Live, you have been missing out on mm-hmm. a lot of great content, yeah. on a lot of great wrestling, on a lot of great storylines. Uh, Drew Gulak won in a fatal four way match, and he gets the chance to see uh, Cedric Alexander. He beat out Mustafa Ali, Hideo Itami, and Buddy Murphy for this chance. And Drew Gulak, ever since I want to say like July fourth. I think was is is what I'm counting as the the turning point for 205 Live. Uh, ever since then, he has been completely kicking ass as the number one submission specialist in WWE. Yeah, he he has been ruthless. He has been vicious, and he's been doing it while still maintaining that he I'm here for a better 205 Live. No flips, no jumps, nothing off the top rope. I am the anti cruiserweight. Yeah. He's been handling his business, and Cedric Alexander has still just been Cedric Alexander. He's been putting on a great show every time he's been in the ring, in the squared circle. So, KD, who you got? Cedric Alexander, the champion, versus Drew Gulak. Ah, uh, this is another one of those ones that's going to be tough. I've been enjoying Gulak's work for a while now, yeah. and he's slowly shuffling back to his make two hundred five uh, live great again persona. It seems where he's like you know wearing the suits and everything else, and it's got this thing. Cedric does a hell of a good job, but he's just kind of been milling about with no aim. I mean, I like the fact that, like, you know, they finally have a cruiserweight match on the card, on a pay-per-view card again. Just should it be on the main card? God, yes. At yeah. the same time, uh, I'm not sure where it can go with Cedric. I mean, he's kind of done everything he's can with it. I'm going to say Gulak wins. Okay. Okay, Daria? Yeah, I'm going to agree with KD. Gulak. Okay. I'm going to make it three for three. Uh, Cedric has been great. I I want to see him continue to succeed, but I honestly think he should have lost the title against Hideo Yeah. I, and, I really do. And then again, it's one of those situations Cedric doesn't really need to win or to retain. Oh, oh no, he has been he has been doing such yeah, an amazing job. he doesn't job. need it. Yeah, he's if been doing such sense. an amazing job with the championship, but it kind of stops with him. Yeah. If he if he continues to retain, what else can you do besides have more and more challengers come up to try to take the title? If you take the title away from Cedric Alexander, then you then you open up a wide berth of uh, a wide a wide array of potential stories that you could run with Drew Gulak as the champion, because then Cedric gets to chase. You have the Lucha House Party that can go after it. Mm-hmm. Buddy Murphy can come back. Uh, Tony Nese can come for it. Everybody can come for it. And you can come from it from a lot of angles. And Drew Gulak is is the perfect kind of heel for 205 Live because he is a great contrast of styles whenever he's in the ring with anybody else. Hell, TJP versus Gulak would be great just to see them go submission for submission. That would be amazing, in my opinion. Yeah. So I got to go for Gulak on that one. Moving on, we go to the actual main roster, at least I believe, uh, with Braun Strowman versus Kevin Owens. Braun Strowman, the monster in the bank, putting his, uh, he's, he's not, it's not his choice, but his money in the bank briefcase is on the line, courtesy of Stephanie McMahon and Constable Baron Corbin. Uh, Kevin Owens, who has been beat up continuously by Braun Strowman, the bully. <laughs> I'm sorry. Now gets a chance to <laughs> possibly become Money in the Bank holder. Um, they put him in a porta potty. Yeah, he put him in a porta potty and, and drop <laughs> oh, kicked him off the stage. <laughs> drop kicked him off the stage. That was mean. Bro. Jesus. That was mean. Jesus. But fantastic. At the it was same funny, time. but damn, son. <laughs> I'm oh, sorry. and threw him <laughs> off the cage at, at Extreme Rules. So mm-hmm. technically, actually, Kevin Owens won Extreme Rules. Oh, yeah, he won it. Yeah. Extreme yeah, he Rules. did win. Yeah. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't worry about it. I, I have my thoughts, and I'll save them for later. Uh, I'll throw it to KD, though. Who you got? Strowan versus Owens. I think Owens gets it. I mean, Braun doesn't really need a briefcase to determine if he can, like, you know, have a title match. I think Owens gets it through, through some various yes. whatever, and he becomes the new Mister Money in the Bank. Okay, Daria. Yeah, I again agree. 
again, Braun doesn't gain or lose anything because he's just phenomenal. So they can really just put him somewhere and he'll be fine. Okay, so the way this match is set up, there are various ways to uh, to to have Braun lose without having him lose anything. And they, they, they've, they've created various outs for this because if Braun loses in any way, if he gets counted out, if he gets disqualified, if he looks at the ref wrong, he can lose his he can lose his money in the bank thing. And that's perfect for this because I think Kevin Owens is going to get the win. And for two reasons. One, the money in the bank briefcase is is 80-20 a heel thing. Mm-hmm. Cashing in at money in the bank is mostly a heel thing. The only time that it's good for a face to have it is one, if you say, hey, I'm going to cash it in at this particular time and give a he- and give a heads up and a word of warning like Rob Van Dam and John Cena did previously, or two, being such an underdog and going against somebody who is leaps and bounds bigger than you that that it tells the story of David and Goliath in and, in and of its own right. Mm-hmm. That's the only time that it is perfect for a face. Braun Strowman is still technically a face. Maybe not a baby face, but he's still a face. And him having the money in the bank being as... His big ass having money in the bank doesn't make any damn sense. It doesn't. It doesn't make any damn sense. Kevin Owens having money in the bank, though, that makes sense. And adding on to the fact that if he wins it away from Braun Strowman, oh my God, the promos that he would cut. The promos he would cut. So Kevin Owens, I think, gets the win. And now we're going to be running up into the championship gauntlet. We've got United States Championships, Intercontinental Championships, SmackDown Tag Team, the Triple Threat for the Women's Championship, Raw Women's Championship, WWE Championship. We are running into the championship gauntlet, so let's let's go handle our stuff as quickly as we possibly can. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Jeff Hardy for the United States Championship. Who do you got, KD? I think Nakamura holds on to it. Boom. There you go. We don't need no more. Dario, who you got? Shinsuke. Nakamura. <laughs> Shinsuke. Uh, Shins- Shinsuke, this is his first title. Mm-hmm. In w- oh, no. No, NXT. No, it's not. Yeah. That, that, first title on the main roster, I should say. Yeah, it is. First title on the main roster. Yeah. And he needs he needs a he needs a, a good uh, uh a good marquee win to retain. And he has been a really good heel, by the way. Oh, he's been he's been a very good heel. So I think Shinsuke would be perfect for this. Let, let 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 him let him run with the United States Championship. Yeah. Let let him want let him run with it with hopefully without Randy Orton interfering. Nobody wants to see your ass. Yeah, I, don't, I still don't know what that's about, but moving on. That's Mo- story. Moving on, we got the Intercontinental Championship match between Dolph Ziggler and Seth Rollins. They're both going to have Drew McIntyre and Dean Ambrose, returning Dean Ambrose ringside. Both are allowed to have him ringside. That opens up the possibilities for whoever might get the win. Intercontinental Championship, Ziggler versus Rollins. Who you got, KD? Well, I mean, firstly, I am excited as hell at Ambrose is back. And he's looking real jacked, baby. <laughs> yeah, he no longer has a dad bod. No, he does not. He's not noodly arms anymore. He's <laughs> like, you know, these can crush walnuts arms. <laughs> yeah, if he, if he does that rebound lariat thing, I think it would actually hurt this time. Yeah, that would probably snap Dolphin too if he managed to do that on him. Yeah. This match is tough because it's like, you know, I didn't have any interest in it until Dean was announced to be coming back and supporting him. So, I mean, I think uh I think uh Seth wins it. Okay. Yeah, I agree. I don't see them bringing Dean back and letting Dolph just retain. I mean, although that's well, that's probably a stupid theory, but no, no, uh, go for it. Yeah, I agree with Dean Ambrose. Yeah, like I, don't, I believe, you know, like Seth said, you have a maniac, so I need one too. Uh, he got a lunatic. Yeah, or a lunatic. For, forget, whatever. Forget it. Forget it. Yeah, he got people. a straight up <laughs> lunatic. Um, yeah. I, I, I want to see Seth win. I really do. I. There, there, we, 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 I could do some fantasy booking and say Dean turns on Seth, uh, but that that doesn't make any sense this doesn't. early, especially since Dean came down to the ring and beat the crap out of Drew and Dolph. So like that wouldn't make any sense right now. So I'll I'll, I'll drop that. 
Uh, I could see Drew finding some way to accidentally costing Dolph the championship and we finally get to see them separate from each other, which definitely needs to happen because as good as Drew and Dolph are together, um, that's got a very, very, very short shelf life. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Drew is destined for bigger things. Yeah, Yeah, that's the thing. That's the thing. And yeah. Dolph may be good, but like there's, there's only so much more he could do. Yeah, there's almost, there's almost so much more. He he's can do. better on the mic. Oh, he's he's better on the mic this time around. Yeah, he's he has been so much better mic. on the mic. Yeah. That promo that he cut was actually pretty damn it good. It was. So so kudos to you, Dolph. But I see Seth Rollins getting the win. There you go. That's yeah. my pick. Seth gets the championship. Moving on, we got the SmackDown Tag Team Championships before uh, between the Bludgeon Brothers and the New Day. Blood, th- again, this this there's not a lot more to say about this. This is just yeah, you know no a story. nice title title yeah. match. Uh, Bludgeon Brothers beat the crap out of the New Day the first time they face each other, and I don't know how we went from the Bludgeon Brothers being so big and dangerous that they beat both the New Day and the Usos between an inch of their lives together, and now all of a sudden, hey, uh, the the who, who was it? The club are able to yeah. hold their own in a title match by themselves against the Bludgeon Brothers. Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know what WWE is doing with this. Uh, but whatever. Bludgeon Brothers, New Day. Who you got, KD? I mean, I think the Bludgeon Brothers have run their course. There's not really anywhere else for them to go. I think it's time for one more New Day title reign. Yeah. Boom. I'll take it. I'll, I'll definitely take it. Yeah. Daria? The New Day! The new day. <laughs> <laughs> I was expecting more. It seems like the new day. That's it. I'm done. I'm done. I, yeah. I, I call it. Call it quits. Uh, you know what? The sa- For the same reason that I think uh, Cedric Alexander should lose a title against Drew Gulak, I think the new day should take the titles away from the Bludgeon brother- Brothers. You open up the possibilities for more people to come in and take a take a shot at the title holders. Uh, and again, the, the very... What's the word I'm looking for? The sort of strange way that they book the Bludgeon Brothers as both being monsters and then nerfing them at a particular point in time. Yeah. Just doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't. And just having them hold the titles, you either have them hold the titles for such a long time and just, you know, continue to be monsters, which is boring as hell. Yeah. Or you have the New Day take it away and start a program with, say, Sanity the Usos again, yeah. the bar, give the bar another chance at, at title gold. You, you have so many more different ways to go for it. And that is going to be much more fun with new day as champions versus the Bludgeon brothers as champions. So I, I picked the new day, pick up the championships, moving on triple threat match, SmackDown women's championship, Mella Carmella versus Becky Lynch versus Charlotte flair. Again, there's not a whole bunch of backstory behind this. We just have a, a triple threat match between, these three. KD, who you got? Uh, I was excited about this match nearly until Charlotte came in because, <laughs> I mean, basically, this is an excuse for Carmella to win again. That's who's going to win. Damn. Uh, Damn. Daria? I don't, this is a tough one. And I only say that because it's Becky's time. But then again, Carmella has been just awesome with the title. No, she hasn't. Well, I was trying to be somewhat nice with that. Don't be nice. Do not be nice. Oh, my God. It's been Becky's time forever. The fact that the people are still behind her, I mean, should be reason enough. Yes. But instead we get uh, Carmella beating everybody. Exactly. Exactly. It's just frustrating, but it's Becky's time, but I know they're not going to give it to Becky. And then again, I can see them not wanting Charlotte not wearing the gold for a while. It's just not a thing for some reason. So I, I, I'll go with Charlotte Flair. Okay. Okay. I think Charlotte basically got added to this as a sort of a pressure valve. You know, as you said, to A, give Carmella a chance to possibly retain but that's not going to happen. And B, to have a chance for, you know, if, if just, just, just like she said, just, just to have Charlotte hold gold again, because the way that they've been booking her throughout her whole career, like they don't want to keep her away from the title picture for yeah. too long. They don't, it doesn't seem like they like to do that. Becky Lynch is the one that deserves to get the win. 
She is. Becky Lynch is the one that needs the win the most out of all three of these women. And I honestly believe Becky Lynch going in with the win as we move forward into that all women's pay-per-view coming up in a couple of months evolution. Mm -hmm. I think that's a better story than Carmella having it, who has, as we said, is not, has not been a good champion. I have my thoughts on that. She has been a horrible champion. She has, she should have lost that championship so many times before, or at least the way that she won it was just ridiculous in my opinion. And just, just in my opinion. And I don't think Charlotte going in as champion for Evolution says a lot because it feels it feels more stagnant as a result because she was the first uh, women's champion, the Raw Women's Champion, yeah, that that they had, I believe, yeah. uh, when when they when they unveiled the title for uh, away from the Divas Championship. And so it's like, hey, we have an Evolution. The person who who was the first ever WWE Women's Champion is still women's champion as we move over to evolution. I don't think that tells a good enough story. So I, I think Becky deserves it. I think Becky's earned it. And I think Becky gets a win. Okay. That, 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 that's, that's my long shot call of the evening uh, for this one. Then we got our WWE Championship match, AJ Styles versus Samoa Joe. Now, this one is a story in the making. If you can, if you can, go... See if you can snag some some video online. Yeah, don't catch last Tuesday though, because that was some BS. Yeah, that was some BS. I don't know what that was about. Uh, go go snag some video online. Go ahead and and get a free trial to Global Force Wrestling's uh, streaming service, so you could possibly see some old matches between Samoa Joe and AJ Styles. Because I don't think this match is going to live up to that kind con- that level of competition. I think it's going to be good. I think it's going to be solid. I think it's going to going to be entertaining but i don't think it's going to be that level of competition between samoa joe and aj styles they got a lot of history with each other they know each other pretty well though so that that's just my take on it uh king dead who you got styles joe i mean this one is actually a toss-up they're both like you know great competitors they have a history with each other they've fought each other to like you know brutal matches before aj's been like you know on a legendary like, you know, a record-setting uh, WWE Championship run, and it's like, does it really need to end at this point? And the answer that keeps popping up in my head is no with a but, because I would love to see Samoa Joe with some proper gold on his waist again. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a toss-up for me, but I'm going to say AJ hold on to it, possibly till WrestleMania. <laughs> oh, damn. All right, Daria. Yeah, I agree. AJ. You say AJ's going to hold on to yeah. it for a while? All right, yeah. this, this and was, Samoa is, guess what Samoa's going to get? What's it going to get? Samoa's going to get oh my God. styled by AJ Styles. <laughs> there you go. I walked into that. I, why, didn't you, why didn't you warn me, KD? Because he knows uh, it's awesome. He knows it's awesome. Anyway, moving on. I This is my second long shot pick of the night. I say Joe. I say Joe because when Joe was chasing the championship, like actually chasing the championship, his 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 presence was so perfect. Bring me Nakamura or bring me my title. That was so great. And when Joe held the title in NXT, that was just the best bit of heel work that they've had in some time. I honestly absolutely loved it, in my opinion. It was one of the best things that you could have. I think Samoa Joe having the title in in WWE on SmackDown would be great. Um, honestly, I'm trying to think who who had who had the title before uh, AJ Styles. Oh, wasn't it Dean? Was no. It Dean? Oh God, no. It was um, Gender. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Right. He yeah. won it. From I completely gender. blocked yeah. that out of my head. <laughs> He oh, won it from gender and hasn't dropped it since. I don't believe, unless he like dropped. No, no, he didn't drop it to anybody else. No, Mm-mm. he's held it since gender. And AJ having the title is fun. It's 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 great. It's, it works. There's a lot of feuds that he could do. He could go on a magnificent run. He could hold it to WrestleMania, and I would not mind it one bit because he's actually on TV defending his championship, and we'll get to that next. Uh. But I still want to see Joe get the win because I think having an actual heel hold the title and be on TV 
would be a fun thing to have. I think it would yeah. inject a little bit more life into SmackDown. It's not lifeless, but it needs a little bit something more. And I think Joe with the title would do well for SmackDown uh, in terms of viewership, in terms of ratings, in terms of just entertainment value, in my opinion. Moving on, we have the second to last match of the night, the Universal Championship match between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. And oh, cue the God. hour-long fart noise. Cue the wanking motion because nobody gives a shit about this. I am absolutely freaking pissed that this is like the 18th time that we've seen this. This has officially reached John Cena versus Randy Orton levels yeah. of this feud. I absolutely am annoyed by this shit. If you can't hear my voice, I don't want this anymore. Just make a decision. Okay, and can I also say something? Excuse me, Mr. Roman Reigns, um, you can't say that this is your house and then continue to lose. Just FYI, love you to pieces. FYI, though. Continue. This can't be your yard. It can't be your house because you keep getting your ass kicked by Brock Lesnar. You can't say that you Better technically, point. you can't technically say you beat him at Greatest Royal Rumble because you would have won on a technicality. You still lost. Okay, just just stop it, Vince. Make a decision, please. Okay, make a choice. Pick one. Okay, King Dad, who is your pick? For what? <laughs> <laughs> For Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns. Uh, I just want this to be over. I think most fans just want this to be over. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> It's like they may have a good match, they may not. I mean, it's yeah. just like one of these things where it's like I don't care. I really don't. Like I can't muster any energy, even with Paul Heyman like doing the most Paul yeah. Heyman of amazing work as usual. But it's just I can't care. That said, I'm gonna say Roman. They they have to do it now. Like we can't wait till Australia. We can't wait till Survivor Series. We can't wait till next year at WrestleMania in New York. It's like, it has to be now. Do it now or don't. Just pick. Do it or don't. That's all there is to it. Yep, I agree. Roman Reigns, moving on. <laughs> I, I said what I had to say. Yeah, just make a pick and move on to the next Just freaking make a decision. Pick Roman Reigns and we can move the hell on. Roman Reigns is my pick. God damn. Final match of the night is quite technically uh, the what might be the actual main event. And this one is the big one. This is a big one. Because we still don't know if Daniel Bryan has resigned with WWE. We don't know what the future holds for him. We have Daniel Bryan versus The Miz. This has been almost eight years in the making, hasn't it? Yeah. This is this is this has gone from the very but first season to, of NXT. Yeah, and I have to say this is one of the best storytellings I have seen. Okay, so I usually don't tell you all to go back and watch stuff on on main TV unless there's like a massive match. And if there's a massive match, you can find it on YouTube. Don't worry about that. Go back to SmackDown and watch all three parts of the Miz and Daniel Bryan story. It is this is like the best uh, uh, video work I've seen in a while. This, the, the video packaging was great. The promos were great. I got super hyped. This is the only match that I'm super hyped for. So, KD, who you got? Miz, Brian. This is another tough one. I mean, this could go either way. I mean, Miz and Brian's history together has, like, I mean, WWE did a hell of a job showing off, like, you know, their history together. They've been intertwined since the very, nearly the beginning, basically. I mean, the whole NXT, start with NXT, the rivalry, everything else. And it's just like, I mean, for both of them, this may not be closure, but it's the match that, like, you know, that needs to happen right at this moment. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, Frick, I hate even saying this, but I mean, I know it goes against popular consensus. Miz. Mm. Daria. Ugh. God, yeah. You know what? I'll just go with the Miz. Damn. You know what? Okay, so this is this is kind of tough. This is this is incredibly tough. I I'll have to say. 
Um, mainly because, as I said, we don't know if if Brian has actually re-signed with WWE yet. All signs are pointing toward yes, because they wouldn't go through all the pro- uh, all the the uh, the trouble of doing this package and and everything uh, if he wasn't going to find some way to make his way back to WWE. I honestly think he he might be re-signing. Um, because of that, I think that the biggest thing that you, you have, you have your, you save your biggest, biggest, biggest match and your biggest, biggest, biggest moments for WrestleMania. And I think you're going to see this match at WrestleMania. And I think you're going to see a second match somewhere between now and WrestleMania. I mean, the stakes need to be bigger for their match. Yeah. Yeah. So I honestly, I honestly think you're going to have WrestleMania be a rubber match. So that means that somewhere down the line, Miz is going to win. And I think the story tells you much better that, that Miz getting the win at SummerSlam, at the, technically the second biggest stage uh, that WWE has, where you could have a match like this. I, I think that's what's going to end up happening. I think we're going to end up seeing the Miz take the win, not even through any nefarious means. I think he's just going to find some way to just weasel his way into a win. Well, of course, it's the Miz. Is, 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 I think that's what's going to happen because having having Daniel Bryan get the win is good, but not great. Yeah. I think it's good, but not great because Tuesday after Miz gets the win, everybody will be booing the absolute shit out of him. Yeah. Oh, my God. So it would be awesome storytelling. Oh, my God. People will be tuning in just to boo him. Yeah. So I think Miz gets the win. And with that, we are finally freaking done with this lengthy ass. Uh, 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 no, what I miss? You got you missed one. Alexa Bliss and Ronda Rousey. Oh my god! Whoops. My bad. I bet- are you trying to say something with that match? No, I actually. Well, oh yes, I am. I am. Nobody gives a, <laughs> shit. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. You know, I'm not even gonna agree. Alexa Bliss, Ronda Rousey, Katie. Who you got? Ah, uh, Ronda. Yeah. Daria. Rhonda. Me, Rhonda. There you go. Now I, 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 I missed it. I go. I know I got it. Now we're done. With that oh. being said, we are finally done with this incredibly long, somewhat milk toast ass SummerSlam card. Okay. We good yeah. now? Yeah, we good. We good we good, good, we good, good now. We're good. Alright. We're good. I'm gonna talk us out. Jesus Christmas. <laughs> As I said, takeover is going to be way better, way way better than this. It's, but yeah. anyway, as always, you can catch our podcast on iTunes. Link in the description below, or at the website at heelkaiju.com. There you can find our shows, articles, and merchandise to keep help keep this site up and running, and to keep us providing you with content. You can also join the Kaiju Wrecking Crew by following us on our Twitter account at heelkaiju, where we'll provide any updates, developments, and insights. Thanks again for listening and. Thank you again, Katie, for joining us on this lengthy ass podcast. Thank you, yep, Katie. Yep. We 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 thank you for your patience and your contributions because you are the hero. You can be a hero, baby. baby. <laughs> he can take away our pain. Okay, see, I stopped. I stopped. Okay, I had more to say, so excuse me. Thank you. And remember, Rude. keep smashing. Bye. Peace out.